Hey guys, and welcome to this first part of my tutorial. Uh, we will be going over some basics uh, in Brawl Machine. For this tutorial, you will need Brawl Machine version 3026. So, if you're not familiar with uh, Brawl Machine, that is the version where the water system has been implemented. We'll be going off scratch, so I'll first showcase all the generators, then the, and show some uh, funky combiner settings, some filters, and in the end some naturals. I will most likely split these videos up, since there are quite a few generators and filters to go over. And in the upcoming videos, I will remake or start a new multi buyer map. And yeah, just explain what I'm doing. So, first and by far most interesting generator is an advanced polling. If you double click on it, you can have all these options. You, do, uh, you can change all of them. So, uh, some are just really simple as changing a skill, other ones get some funky results such as masks, you can reset them. Uh, over to the right you've got some presets which Bolt Machine uh, already made for you. There are some quite unique ones such as this one. But we will be going over the starting settings. Let me quickly get a new one. Oopsie. Uh, there are outputs, primary outputs, and inputs, which are a shaping guide, a distortion guide, and a persistence guide. You can find you can find these three guides in the bottom left corner like levels and inputs where each of them can be manually uh, changed so for instance if we are using this advanced Berlin and oh no, let me start by the base if we use a layout generator which does exactly what it says we have four options of lines a polygon a circle and a box if we would make it a line and for instance we are going to create a, a mountain I'm doing this by pressing and just dragging it across the screen you can also click various points and then press the right bounce button but I find this to be efficient then we use some breakup to give it some uh, less trade angles for mountains, I usually set the breakup scale to 3.3 .3 and the roughness to 6, which will result in a already kind of mountain. If we press on the mountain range and then go to the shape properties, we can change a lot of settings in here as well. For instance, we can we can change the default height. Excuse me, we can change the default height, as you can see happening here and here. The opacity, so that means, this just means that the height uh, is, has been lowered, this one. Means that the slopes are getting less. Uh, fall of distance, currently the fall of distance is 4 ki kilometers, that means that from this point to this point is roughly four kilometers where as we decrease this it will get thinner and thinner but if we increase it we'll get a mighty looking mountain I usually leave it at around 4k because yeah that's just my preference 
down here we can choose how the fall uh, will be so we've got now uh, we now got a straight line well this would be more for a canyon thing this for the opposite of a canyon and this is just I don't know you can change them directly into here where the uh, original slope has been displayed with points white points you can there are also some curve presets you can use some are nice some are not nice as you can see I use some for testing I don't really use that to be honest so I will just use the linear falls you can also have this shape up breakup classification that's uh, exactly the same as this breakup for masks, I usually go with that 3.3 and 6 and just boost this to 200. You'll see that uh, they will get, give a more distorted mountain range, but it also gives way more noise and steeper lines. So I do not prefer that. I usually set this on 100, the default settings. And here we are. You go to the 3D view pressing F8 or going to here. It is now, uh, it will be blurry if you press build to current device. You'll build all the devices which have been connected. For instance, if I press this one, all the advanced Berlins will also render out. You can see that by the green box beneath the device. If we are going to implement the layer generator in the shaping guide, you will see that the advanced Berlin uses the layer generator to generate a terrain. As you can see, the spot where the layer generator has been marked, uh, that's where the advanced Berlin uh, makes the terrain higher. We can change this by over here so if we go to 8 it will almost be a representation of the layer generator just a little flat if we do it to 1 it will kind of uh, let it influence by the by the lay layout generator but not too much I usually set it on 1 so it has that uh, so it has the shape but also some of his own properties. I will be using this kind of noise, not too much. If I boost this up too much, it will look yeah, unnatural and that's not what I'm going for. So we'll go for this. And now we're going to use this advanced Berlin as a distortion guide to this advanced Berlin. If we set this to zero, nothing has happened to the train. If we are going to boost this, you can see the train shifting, creating some nice tra traces and some funky shapes. If we increase, it will, uh, how do you say that? We select a device by pressing on it, then using uh, then pressing F on the keyboard it will say preview locked and if I stand on any other device it will remain this one so we can easily change some uh, some details in the distortion guide and see the result in the top left corner if we decrease the feature scale it will basically flat out and there won't be any distortion but if you, as you can see, if I increase the feature scale, the distortion will uh, maximize towards this, which is absolutely not uh, good. So I'll keep it around here, just above mountains, just below hills. It will give some funky looking terrain. If we then boost the octaves, octaves meaning the amount of assistance being used. So
So for instance, if I use one, you can clearly see the roundings. And if I then demask this one and go into here, you can see exactly what I meant. Even if I render it out, it will remain like this. If I boost up the octave, you can see that the shape will get clearer and clearer. You can get some funky effects with that, such as this, or some nice dunes. I think I'm going to keep this. If you change the persistence, so by default it is at 0 0.5, and you change that, if you go to 0, it will basically be the same as octave 0. If you go higher than 0 0.5, uh, it will create a more spiky terrain. So I'm just going to leave it at 0 0.5. As of now, we've got this, where I want a natural device, but that will come up in a later video. Currently, I've explained advanced Perlin, and I will continue with a basic noise. A basic noise is almost the same as a as an advanced Perlin. But you cannot use a shaping guide, a distortion guide, or a persistence guide. Oh wait, I haven't even showed a persistence guide, excuse me. If, okay, then we're going to use the basic noise as a persistence guide. A persistence guide will basically smooth the terrain on the higher patches of this terrain. So for instance, the top right corner will be smoother than the left bottom. And if we up the persistence guide, you can see that happening. Bottom left is getting really, uh, really flat. If you look at the top left while I'm changing the setting, you can see what's going on. If we are going quickly to change the seat, you see that it can give a funky effect. Uh, most of the times I use the advanced Perlin I'm using as my distortion guide, also as a persistence guide, just to save some tiny memory to funky effects. So, coming to the basic noise, it is basically at, uh, an advanced Perlin, except those three inputs. You've got your basic rig, uh, rig and billowy, your feature skill. Uh, and some specific ranges where you want to go. I usually set it on, uh, set it on use full range and just play around with the steepness, and the persistence and the octaves. Uh, going along is the color generator which will hopefully speak for itself. It is a color generator with all the colors you can imagine. So for instance, if I want a nice tint of green, I can just click it, okay, and then move. Uh, the mask input, as you can see here and here, both the fighters have a mask input. If you mask it, it will generate the colors based on the height map. So if let me quickly deploy this as a height map, this would be the height map, the, high, the white parts being the highest, the black parts being the lowest. And if we uh, implement it into the color generator, you can see that on the higher parts, there will be a uh, better green than uh, what we originally cho chosen, have chosen. And on the spots where it's black, there won't be on it any color. Uh, let me change this back. Let me quickly check. Uh, let me quickly use, tell you about the constant. A constant is pretty straightforward as well. It, basic, it basically just makes a constant at any uh, height you prefer. Uh, yeah, I cannot really say anything else about this. Uh, yeah, 
the general height of World Machine is 2625 blocks, uh, which you can change in the preferences uh, table. But I do not recommend that for beginners since it's quite difficult to get the scaling right. Uh, in my next video, I will be going to over the file input gradient, the layer generator, perhaps more in depth, uh, the radio grid and the photo node. I will be uh, skipping the library input since I have not seen any use of it in the past three years, so I don't see any reason to include it into it in a tutorial. I hope I'll see you guys there. Have a good one and ciao!